Let me to come to order. Uh, before we start, I wanted to notice to every, to every member that you'll find... Today is the first time the Committee of the House is holding an open public hearing on the matter. I've asked the Inspector General and the Undersecretary to appear today because it is imperative that the American people understand, A, where our security system is going, B, how it's being used, C, and what protections are in place to ensure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Congress has responded by appropriating over $100 billion in military, economic... Since the beginning, the President has been overly worried, in my view, that giving Ukraine what it needs to win would be too escalatory. This hesitation has only prolonged the war and driven up the cost in terms of dollars and lives. Uh, this conflict must end, and the President must be willing to do what it takes to end it with victory. <clears throat> Continued reluctance and indecision only empowers Putin, and it sends the wrong message, wrong signals to President Xi and the Chinese Communist Party. And These are unprecedented numbers, and it requires an unprecedented level of oversight. Even us in the U.S., we saw the war coming, we supported Ukraine, but even us, along with everybody else, thought the Ukrainians didn't stand a chance. We, we thought that the, the Russians would be in Kyiv in a week or two, a month at the most. So the fact that they've been as successful as they have been is the best evidence we have that these systems and support that we're sending them is being as well used as it possibly can. That, I yield to my friend and colleague, the ranking member. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I welcome our witnesses. While we have constructive criticism of what's going on, let's make sure that that criticism is constructive and we maintain our unity. And I know it is very, very difficult um, for the folks on the other side of the aisle to say anything positive about the Biden administration. Uh, but part of holding this coalition together is to acknowledge the incredible job that has been done in the last year and to maintain that unity and to not jump at every shiny object that seems to be criticism of the Biden administration, like the F-16. Right now, and I've asked this question, we are getting every single weapon system that we can to Ukraine. There is not a decision being made about eh, that might be escalatory. It's about what can we get to them? How can we maintain the support? We've spent a lot of money. There is not a limitless amount of money or a limitless amount of equipment. Thank you, Dr. Call. I recognize General Sims now for five minutes to summarize his statement. The fighting has replicated the conditions of the First World War. Key to changing this paradigm is creating a Ukrainian armed forces capable of breaking this state of fighting. In this regard, since I, last updated this, since I last updated this committee, the concentration of U.S. effort has been focused on combining equipment and munitions with people and training. Thank you, Dr. Call. I recognize General Sims now for five minutes to summarize his statement. All told, since January, the U.S. military has trained another 1,000 Ukrainians, bringing the total by the United States, trained by the United States, to just over 4,000. As I speak, Ukrainians are training in multiple locations in Europe, working with U.S. service members and military trainers from our allies and partners. Pallets for ammunition to medical and cold weather gear. Finally, and critically important to you, thank you for what this committee and this Congress have done and continue to do to provide oversight and resources in support of Ukraine as they continue the fight against the illegal and unprovoked large-scale invasion. While the Ukrainians bear the real burdens of this war, your support and that of the American people has had a profound impact on Ukraine's future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, General. Mr. Dortch, you're recognized. In 2022, we issued two management advisories that identified several areas of concern that could directly impact the DOD's ability to transparently track and report the supplemental appropriations for Ukraine. Earlier this year, we initiated an audit about examining DOD's execution of funds appropriated to assist Ukraine. We the democracies in Europe and North America, but uh, uh, countries around the world to Ukraine's aid. At the end of January, I traveled with the leaders of the state and USAID OIGs to Germany, Poland, and into Ukraine in order to obtain the latest on-the-ground perspective, to build on our coordinated approach, and to deliver an unambiguous message to American and, in Kyiv, high-level Ukrainian officials about the expectations for accountability for U.S. assistance. The trip made clear that the situation is fluid and calls for continuous, agile oversight. ...to help negotiate on America's behalf in the renewed negotiations during the Biden administration. 